Let's talk to our um, guest, the Titanic expert and author, Tim Moulton. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I really appreciate it. Um, what could the most successful journey down there show? If you were getting good visibility and the weather was conducive and you somehow ended up in the right place, what might you, after all these years, be able to see? Well, I think the key thing that we haven't discovered yet is really what's underneath the mud, because that's where the damage to the iceberg lies. And no one's yet been able to penetrate that in the way uh, that archaeologists do. But really, the, these were tourist trips. And, um, you know, it was a two and a half hour wait. They only had four hours on the bottom. And then it was two and a half hours on the way back. But something's gone terribly wrong and they've lost contact with the, the mothership, as it were. But I suppose what I'm asking you is how much of the wreckage remains, what sorts of things are still there? In other words, people who pay £250,000 to go down there, I heard this guy describe a sort of rusty anchor. What is the best case scenario of what they might be able to see when they get there if they see the best stuff? Sure. I mean, what there is, what is there is very different to what they'll see. So what is there is a fantastically well-preserved section of the bow that's about 300 feet long. Uh, the stern is in a very bad condition, but further away. But um, as, as your commentator says, in fact, they're only going to see just a fleeting glimpse. Yeah. Um, in fact, the best way to, to learn about Titanic is rather as your images are showing now, um, actually from all these stitched together photographs from previous expeditions. If you're actually down there, it's the thrill of being there just to catch a glimpse of her, you're not going to get a sense of the ship at all from being there in a man submersible. So you you are obviously a Titanic expert. Have you have you made the trip down there? Would you like to do so? If you I don't know whether you've got a, a spare 250,000 pounds in your back pocket or not, or down the back of the sofa, but if you did, would you spend it on that? Actually, I wouldn't, um, because we do have these fantastic images already of the Titanic, um, and really to risk one's life to go down there to actually not be able to see more than about your hand in front of your face, and just to see a tiny portion of the vessel, um, I, I wouldn't take that risk because um, I have a young family. And, and when you say what we really need to know is what's beneath the mud, what might be there? What could be unearthed if, if the technology ever existed to be able to do so? What is there? Well, really, it's, um, it's the only bit that we haven't yet seen. No one's seen inside the wreck yet and no one's seen under the mud. So what under the mud will show us is precisely how the Titanic uh, collided with the iceberg and precisely what damage was done that made her sink. Obviously, we can learn a lot from within the wreck as well. But of Tim, course, sorry to interrupt also... you, but how will it show that? How beneath the mud will you be able to see, as you said, how it collided? How will it show well, you that? It, absolutely. Well, as the uh, iceberg went along the side of the Titanic, it popped the rivet heads off the rivets of the steel plates on Titanic. And what you'll be able to see is whether the most of that damage was on what we call the right hand or starboard side of the ship, or um, as the helmsman of Titanic said, who survived, whether all the damage was underneath. And this might go some way to explaining how such a glancing blow did such catastrophic damage. And and so you would see you would see that, but you wouldn't see. I mean, I think people have always had a very um, maybe it's a Disney esque um, um, kind of impression about what you might see in terms of you know you might see beautiful um, crockery and china and chandeliers and jewels and artifacts of that kind that it might have a kind of obviously utterly tragic but nevertheless a kind of beauty a romance a sort of rococo glory to it did that happen and have pillagers already taken all those things away or did that never happen well, you're absolutely right, Vanessa, that that did happen. And those artefacts and jewellery and things are actually lying on the seabed. Oh. Um, and they can be seen in some of these very sharp images that we've been getting. Uh, but the chance of you stumbling across one of those uh, in a submersible for the brief period you're down there are, are very slim. But of course, one day these things could be raised or could be um, exhibited. And, and as an expert on Titanic, what are the, the kind of passions and obsessions that consume you now after all these years? I mean, it was a long time ago. I think most people roughly think they get the gist of it. We've all seen the film, whether we wanted to or not. We've all sung the song, whether we wanted to or not. What, what are you still specialising in after all this time? <laughs> well, I'm very interested in why they saw the Berg a little bit too late, because, in fact, they knew there was ice in the area. They knew it was clear. They, knew, they felt they could um, see the Berg in time to avoid it. But unfortunately, 
unfortunately, a little bit of what we call refraction on the horizon caused by the very cold water they were in actually caused a little haze, which meant they saw the berg a little bit too late. And what's fascinating about that briefly is that the lookouts were not believed. The lookout said there was a haze and they were disbelieved because all the officers said it was a perfectly clear night. Um, well, this, uh, this shows that there's more to learn about the atmospheric conditions that caused the sinking than people have hitherto realised. Yeah, I think that's all part of the allure of going to this. You know, this the the billionaire businessman who was there has also been up to space on Jeff Bezos's mm -hmm. exploration on 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 his rocket that he sent up there. This is somebody who has traversed both the North and the South Pole. So this is an extreme pursuit. I think that's one of the reasons that people go for it. Yes, you mightn't get to see the full picture of the Titanic, but by gosh, it is an experience. So, so, so let's go back to Tim and Tim. So people, you know, paying a great deal of money for for the experience, and it seems that they've had to sign document after document after document confirming that they realise that their lives are very much in danger. That they they could, heaven forbid, pay with their lives for the privilege of seeing this. I think that's right, but I don't believe that the the gentleman whose nineteen year old son is down there actually believed that that. Uh, small print might actually come to a reality that the, 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 the tragedy is that you think it'll be safe and it'll and that this is just a, a box ticking exercise um, but unfortunately it may prove on this occasion that it was not a box ticking exercise and that they were really entering into something that was perhaps a lot more dangerous than they could ever have truly realized what we can show you now, I think, is a, is a picture of the control responsible for, for, for guiding this um, submersible. And it's effectively an, an Xbox control, Tim. That's right. Um, I mean, when Ballard found the wreck, he was using a US Navy sub, sub, submersible and then submarine uh, to do so. So they've got a lot, a lot more investment. And um, this is a commercial submarine, um, which obviously has been put together in the best way that OceanGate could have done it. But it's not of the technology and rigor that you would get from a state sponsored expedition. Yeah, I'd say that's that's generally true. We, we talked earlier on about how the army does use these type of controls for using its drones in the military. We've seen that in Afghanistan. We've seen that in various different operating theatres. But it's not the type of thing that you would necessarily expect to see in, you know, a Royal Navy submarine that goes down. One of the other key interesting things with this is there had been calls previously to stop all of this exploration around the Titanic. There's been so many expeditions down there, fears that parts of its hull were being pillaged, mm -hmm. that it was being a huge driver for tourism. There's no suggestion that the company that was involved in this operation had anything to do with, along the lines of that. But surely I think now there will be that question. Yes, there's been thousands of these explorations, but sometimes it does take that one accident to go, we need to, we need to relook at how people are engaging with the Titanic. And remember, in just less than 40 minutes time, we are expecting that press conference from the US Coast Guard. We're gonna be carrying that here on Talk TV, where we'll hopefully get some more information. Mm -hmm. Some of the latest things that the Coast Guard has been telling us, they've searched an area that is 10,000 square miles big. That wow. is, almost the size of Belgium. It's about 1.25 yeah. times the size of Wales. And they've got aircraft in the air who are just looking at the surface of the water. They've got ones that are carrying out sonar searches as well as subsurface searches. So they're really trying all that they can to do this, but unfavorable weather conditions, the distance that they are away from everything, the time, the oxygen, all of that, it, it's a race against time. Tim, my final question for you. Uh, do you think a, a, a Titanic industry has sprung up and do you think it's something that, that needs to be further monitored and maybe much further controlled so that we don't end up with this level of tragedy potentially? I think you're right. I think we're all praying that these people will miraculously escape this uh, terrible jeopardy that they're currently in. Um, but should that not be the case, we absolutely must make sure that this never happens again. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Tim, Ollie, I know I'm going to see you again uh, as the programme unfolds. Thank you very much indeed, Tim. Thank you.